And you're still live here on News Text. Right now, I'm taking you to the Electoral Commission uh, because my colleague, Quincy Parker Wilson, is there at the first of their bi weekly news conference to get us up to speed on the voter registration exercise, which is underway. As at Friday, the 24th of July, that is the end of the fourth phase, the total number of registered voters stood at 11 million. 629,480 persons. At the end of the fourth phase, the Greater Accra region had the highest number of registrants, totally 2,615,925 persons. The Ashanti region came second, with a total of 2,089,000 923 persons. And the Eastern region came third with a total of 1,084,734 people. After this, after the Eastern region comes the Central region with 1,074,519 registrants. The Western region follows thereafter with 734,000 545 people. And then we come to the northern region with 687,123 registrants. The Volta region follows with 660,508 registrants. And then Bono region with 460,000 222 registrants. The Upper East Region follows with 409,825 registrants. And then we have Bodo East Region with 391,777 registrants. The Western North Region follows with 300,015 persons. The Upper West Region has 299,480 registrants. And the OT Region follows Upper West with 226,109 registrants. The Ahafo Region follows there from there with 212,670 registrants. And the Savannah Region follows with 119,126 registrants. Finally, we have the Northeast region with 186,975 registrants. This gives us a total of 11 million, as at the end of phase four, 11,629,480 persons. As at yesterday, Sunday, the 26th of July, the Commission recorded a total of 12,371,651 registrants. These ha they have all successfully registered as part of this process. And this represents 82.5% of our expected target of 15 million. It's important to note that these figures, as we have said time and time again, are provisional. We have the process of deduplication that picks up registrants who may have conducted multiple registrations and so on and so forth. So this these figures we are presenting are provisional. The, pro the figures go through the a system that identifies those who have uh, undergone multiple registration. And so once that happens and that once that a process is completed, we will then present the actual figures. Finally, I'd like to turn our attention to a new policy that the Commission has introduced on nominations. The receipt of nominations for presidential and parliamentary elections for the 2020 election. Will, sorry, the Commission has, in view of the COVID-19 pandemic, introduced for the first time 
a system where our nomination forms will be made available on our website. As such, candidates no longer have to come to the commission to pick up their nomination forms before filing. They simply have to visit our website and download the various forms. This will help lighten the burden that candidates have to go through when filing their nominations. Additionally, the guidelines for nominations will also be made available on our website. The Commission believes that this initiative will simplify the odious filing process. And I believe that the dates when the forms will be made available will be communicated shortly. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, before we close our curtains to today's Let the Citizen Know Encounter, we take this opportunity to thank the general public for the constructive feedback we continue to receive from them. We value the feedback that comes in because it helps us to improve upon our work and deliver better service to the citizenry. As a listening commission, our doors remain open and we look forward to receiving your ideas and your insights, which we will implement as best as we can. I thank you all for your attention. May God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for that comprehensive update. I leave the floor is open now for respective questions. And let me reiterate, I hope that we would have to stick to the subject matter. And the registration exercise and it's a bit um, useless. And the candles may ask a few questions. One, media has one question. Please know the whole barrel of questions. And then, um, we're ready. Yeah, I think about six questions will do. Please stick to the issue. I think the, the size of the Thank you. So that is a live feed from the head office of the Electoral Commission. Uh, you had uh, the chairperson, Jean Mensah, bring us up to speed on the voter registration exercise, which is ongoing. So far, a little over 12 million people have uh, managed to register, but she's indicating uh, that there's uh, another phase that would go through after the registration process uh, to try and remove the duplicates uh, in the system and also uh, clean the system essentially. Uh, but also, very importantly, she mentioned that nomination forms will be available online, and this has been necessitated by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this is to reduce interaction at the office and also to make it easier for uh, candidates, both parliamentary and presidential candidates, who would want to contest the December 7th general elections. And so we'll be going back to the Electoral Commission uh, to get some more clarity as uh, some colleagues there are asking questions uh, to bring us some more information on what you're doing. What we do not know is whether or not the forms downloaded from the website of the Electoral Commission can be filed as and returned to the EC via same means or via uh, another means or you necessarily have to submit it in person. That will need some clarity on. But as we speak, I I mean, I find it difficult to believe, but I think that because we have various categories and so they may not necessarily be uniformed in the police attire. But nonetheless, maybe you can give us some of these statistics at the end of this uh, session so that we can pick it up. And that's the constructive feedback that we look forward to receiving from the general public. And in instances where this has come to our attention with specific details of the center's name and so on, we have taken it up with the appropriate agencies. Again, you mentioned that you went to some centers where the staff had only the shield zone. It's important, again, to mention it. 
And as we, as we emphasized, as I mentioned in my pre presentation, where we have received information that staff are not following the protocols, we have done our own investigations and we have withdrawn those staff. So it would be important to present us with the actual centers where staff you know, were not uh, wearing their, their masks, but only had their shields on. And again, I'm sure that you have the opportunity to do so, to provide us with that information at the end of the process. But we'd like to assure you that we take the security of our citizens, you know, very, very, you know, we take it very, very seriously. And I think I mentioned that in my presentation, and that is why we continue to engage the security agencies and through the mechanism of the you know, election security tax force on a daily basis, providing them with information. And I think I mentioned that, that whenever we pick up information from the field, we are quick to, you know, really raise to them through the mechanisms that have been set up at the national, regional, and district offices. So it will be important to have that information and we look forward to receiving it from you. And with our staff as well, who have misconducted themselves, I think this is something that we've mentioned. We take the safety of registrants very, very seriously. And we have had to withdraw staff for simple things as not wearing their security, not wearing their masks, not applying the materials such as sanitizers and liquid soap and so on that have been made available you know, at the various centers. I mentioned here that the commission has procured an adequate supply of sanitizers, liquid soap, thermometer guns, and so on and so forth. And therefore, you know, the commission will not countenance any officer who does not put these items to use. So again, we would like to get the information to enable us act. I think that we do not have the numbers because it's a daily, it's not static where you, 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 you act on officials who are misconducting themselves and breaching the laid down guidelines that we set. It's a daily, you know, it's a daily process where you are picking up information. And so for the gentleman who just spoke, who I responded to, had he provided the specific centers, you go on and you do your own investigation using our officials on the field, our full-time staff. If it is found out to be true, those officials are withdrawn. But it's a daily, daily, you know, process. And we encourage citizens who go to the registration centers and who see officials flouting the regulations to make it available to us, you know, and to let us know where the centers are and so on. I think with the target set, we are confident that, you know, the processes we put in place, if there are, there are applicants who have not registered, they would be able to take opportunity and take advantage of you know, the processes that we have in place. As I mentioned, we have 8,530 kits which have been deployed to the field. Of these kits, we have a good number of mobile teams that are going around to areas where you have a high concentration of applicants. So if the, if the citizens are there, if we have the eligible citizens who, you know, qualified to be registered, the processes we've been, we have put in place will take care of them. But I think the key is that there should be the availability of eligible citizens. I can assure you that the processes we have put in place are working. The kids are there, the officials are working, you know, round the clock efficiently and professionally to ensure that high numbers are registered on a daily basis. I did mention that on average, we are registering 150 persons across the country. However, you find that some of our officials are using less than six minutes to go through the registration process. And they are registering per kit as many as 280 persons per kit. So with the processes that we've put in place, so long as we have the eligible citizens, we should be able to meet our target. But if the citizens are not there, then of course, will fall below the target that we have set. Thank you. I think there was one more question about the police performing phenomenally, and I never said that the police, I said the process, the mechanism that we had put in place using the election security tax force has worked very well with rare exceptions. And 
I believe that the commission, and that's why we, we've mentioned it here, that question has been answered. I worry about the youth citizens taking the law into their hands and not following laid down process. I think I mentioned it in my presentation that the commission has put in place processes, mechanisms through which citizens can voice their complaints and their concerns. And we expect citizens to do so. And therefore, we do not encourage citizens taking the law into their hands. I think time and time again, we have condemned violence on this platform. And we have urged our citizens to follow the laid down mechanisms because they do work. The challenge the process where if you have to challenge an applicant because you believe that applicant is not eligible, those processes do work because you go, there's a challenge form that you fill and you have the registration review committee that will sit on these forms and determine whether or not the person is eligible. That committee has on it the district police commander, the head of the uh, education service at the district. It also has political party representatives on the committee. So those mechanisms work. Apart from that, when it comes to exhibition as well, one can still have the opportunity to challenge. So the mechanisms work, and as a commission, our number one goal is to encourage citizens to use those mechanisms that we have made available at the districts and not to take the law into their hands. I believe that I've answered all the questions, and unless we have any more coming to you. Thank you very much. Okay. I believe uh, you want to ask the questions. I think we've answered that question. And I did mention in my presentation that we procured an adequate supply of you know, materials for uh, teams. If you visit our warehouse where the materials are kept, you still find an adequate supply of liquid soap, sanitizers, face masks, and you know, thermometer guns and batteries and so on and so forth. Maybe I should mention here that in, in cases you, you go there and officials are not using it. But I'm pleased to mention that in the majority of places, you do find that they are applying these you know, materials that have been procured. And so the EC at every phase supplies. So it's not a one time. At every phase, there's a number that has been earmarked for each of the centers. And where the center runs short of those uh, items, they do have supervisors who have to communicate this back to the EC. There was an instance in, I believe, the phase two in the Engelbert School, and I do not want to mention the official's name, but we did re receive reports on the first day when the phase two was starting. It was a Sunday that some applicants had gone there, and the lady in charge you know, was not using the items that had been provided to her. Immediately, we called the district officer for Ayawa So West in the person of Lydia Ajiri, and we asked her that what is happening at the Engelbert School? And she mentioned that she had supplied them with an addict, for giving them four bottle, big bottles of sanitizer, four bottles, big bottles of liquid soap. And this was the first day, and she was not using it. So you do find that, and we immediately removed her. We laid her off on that same day. And so she's not the only one. There have been instances, you know. So I think you should give us this 
uh, information that you, the name of the center where you are picking this up. But we do have monitors on the field. Quite a number of monitors have been deployed into the field. They are also providing us with information. But in the majority of places, you know, people are applying these uh, tools. I believe that you've registered. And did you have to buy liquid soap in that place? Or that's the Suhum place? Yeah, it was all very police. Okay, it was that very police. Okay, but I believe that, you know, you do have some bad nuts. But we've said that the commission will not shield anybody because these materials are there. Therefore, there's no need to, you know, to cover up. People, you have been supplied, you have to put them to use. And even as we go on, when we receive the reports, we would lay those who do not observe these safety protocols and use the materials put at their disposal. We would have no option than to lay them off. Thank you. And that is our live feed from the Electoral Commission. You had the, the chairperson, Jean Mensah, answer some questions on the use of hand sanitizers, uh, whether or not if the EC have provided enough of those, and for their staff who are not uh, adhering to the protocols. Jean Mensah says they've had cause to uh, remove some of them uh, from some of the registration centers for not adhering to some of these regulations. But she continues to assure that they have made enough provision as far as thermometer guns are concerned, uh, face masks for their agents, hand sanitizers and, and, and liquid soap, among others, uh, vernacular buckets, and all of the things that you need to ensure that you are safe at that registration uh, center to be able to go through the process. On the issue of voter uh, registration violence, the violence, pocket of violence that we have seen at some of the registration centers, uh, she says uh, they welcome every information and feedback from the public to be able to deal with this uh, comprehensively and decisively in instances where the attention have been drawn uh, to some of these issues they have been uh, in touch with the relevant agencies mainly the security agencies the police who are part of the tax force that you're working with to be able to address uh, some of these issues and so that is the update from the electoral commission and that's the first of the bi-weekly news conference to bring us up to speed on the activities and this week today's uh, news conference has focused on the ongoing voter registration exercise 12 million people a little above that have registered so far and we are uh, in the very final phase of of the registration and she expects that Ghanaians would uh, turn up to register for the december 7 elections after which uh, they will be doing some cleaning to make sure that the register is fit for the purpose. And also, you had a talk about the uh, uh, filing of nominations for the candidates, both at the parliamentary level and also at the presidential level. The EC will be bringing us some more detail on how forms can be downloaded online and submitted uh, in their subsequent interaction. That is it for now. Many thanks for your company. You can log on to myjoyonline.com. We have more stories there. I'll be back at midday with. Join us today. Stay with us.